Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here again with you in this 73rd edition of the IREPAS meeting, held in this particularly marvelous and full of history city, which is uh, Rome. As usual, I will try to give you a brief overview of how the global steel long products market is performing, as well as the outlook of, for the sector in the coming years. As most of you know, Celsa Group, with about 9 million tons of production capacity per year, is one of the largest producers of steel long products in Europe. We have industrial operations in eight countries, Denmark, Finland, France, Norway, Poland, Sweden, Spain, and United Kingdom. As usual, um, I will start with the overview of the construction sector, which is clearly the key steel using sector for long products, before focusing on a steel and long products consumption evolution. One specific additional slide on reverse market, international prices, and finally a quick summary and outlook. But uh, before we start on the content, I would like to spend half a minute to talk about safety, which is a top priority at Celsa Group. In our last meeting, I mentioned how simple initiatives can make the difference, and I described you the awarded Brothers Keeper program developed at Celsa Hutostrovic in Poland. Today, I want to introduce you the Celsa Group second party internal cross audit program, consisting in audits conducted by teams of trained managers of Celsa Group from different units, contributing to share best practices and continuous improvement. That is, managers from different units help other units to improve. Not surprisingly, lost time injury rate has dropped as fast as the number of audits has grown. On construction, first, I would like to insist that long-term fundamentals remain very strong for our sector. And please, let me present again the big picture. World population is expected to reach 8 billion people by 2025 and more than 9 billion people by 2050. By 2050, 2.5 billion people is projected to be added to the existing 3.9 billion people residing in urban areas. This is a urbanization process that will certainly drive still long construction demand. Indeed, global construction is expected to grow at a faster pace than the world GDP over the next decade. If we take a look at the European Union, we first should notice that the GDP has grown in line with expectations in the first semester of this year. September data shows that economic sentiment on the top figure, as well as business climate in the center of the picture, are both improving. And in fact, in Europe, construction production, it's the bottom figure, has also increased. All in all, European construction output is expected to grow by, by 1.7% this year and by 2.3% during 2016, consolidating the recovery trend after the economic crisis. If we look at the evolution of the global steel consumption, 2015 is expected to end with a growth of 0.5%, and 2016, with 
And this, despite the performance of the sector in China particularly, which accounts for about half of the global steel consumption. If we look at long products consumption, we will see that it has been growing consistently over the last years, reaching 836 million tons in 2014, which accumulated growth of 45 percent since 2008. If we take a look at the evolution of the global long products consumption by regions, it is clear that Asian markets are driving global consumption. They account for about 70% of the total consumption in 2014. China in particular for more than 50%. If we now look at the performance of the sector during the first half of this year, comparing it with the first half of last year, 2014, we can clearly see the impact of China in the global performance of the sector. Focusing on rivers, consumption figures show clearly different performance by regions, with notable growth in the European Union, North America, as well as in the category rest of the world. Looking to, into the section's consumption, one should note that the overall performance has been severely affected by the this country's performance, which has had a significant drop in consumption. Concerning merchant bars, consumption at global level during the first semester of this year, compared with the first semester of 2014, has a decline of 3.8% despite the remarkable growth in the other world category. On wire rod, again, the estimated drop of consumption in China contributes significantly to the overall performance, despite the positive figures of the European Union and North America. Let's now focus one additional slide on rivers. As already been said many times, if we compare estimated figures of consumption with production by regions, it becomes clear that having a reasonable balanced supply and demand at regional level should remain a clear priority for river producers. International price situation. If we look at the price evolution for rivers, wire rod, and billets, we can clearly notice that the prices has followed the current raw materials price evolution. And please, again, do not look at these figures as real market prices, but rather as a kind of an index to follow the prices evolution. In the same way, if we now look at CFR prices and spreads for rivers, it has to be highlighted that during the last months, spreads has been relatively much more stable than scrap and river prices. Conclusions. The first half of 2015 figures for long products have been mainly influenced by the evolution of consumption in China. In fact, 2015 and 2016, global consumption excluding China is expected to maintain reasonable levels of growth. China overcapacity and growth deceleration is perceived still as the major risk for global consumption evolution to weather with low oil and raw material prices, which may affect certain developing economies, as well as also geopolitical tensions. All in all, what we should not forget 
is that long-term fundamentals for long steel products remain very strong, very strong. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention.